welcome to Scale Car Garage. Well, um, we're back on the Alpha project. Um, last we left you, wonderful folks, we were working on the chassis uh, to go with these uh, lovely bodies and we're attempting to have a slot car with opening doors uh, for no other reason than to have a slot car with opening doors and I'm blothering on so uh, why don't we uh, why don't we get back to building those chassis <laughs> here at scale car garage well as you may remember this all began uh, excuse me for putting my glasses on with this uh, die cast which we then created um, molds for we stripped the paint from the die cast we took it apart and we created molds for uh, all of the parts including the opening doors uh, which I think are uh, really very very neat and it, it makes a wonderful static uh, piece for around the track which uh, which is fine it's lovely perfect 132nd scale uh, but it was also screaming out to become a slot car um, so the first iteration of slot car that uh, I thought we would try and make would be a slot car with actual opening doors and um, really this, this is quite a few experiments all in one and, and again apart me pardon me for recapping but um, of course you can always go back and watch the episodes but um, we did some uh, color casting uh, which worked with the die cast very very well uh, or static model excuse me very very well and um, I think it's gonna work really well with our slot car with opening doors and um, of course I didn't want to throw away the very first uh, cast, and it is not, it's not perfect, but uh, I think it'll make a great companion race car, uh, slot car that is, to the red one. So um, why don't we go to the other workbench where we have our two chassis and uh, try and get those chassis to uh, go around the track. All right, so here we are at the workbench that we build our chassis on. You, you folks know already. Um, anyway, so um, I have all the parts laid out here. Um, except I guess I need four more tires, but we're not at the tire stage anyway. <laughs> but what do I have here? I have, well, the two chassis that we've built so far. I have the drive shafts. Um, which actually were scavenged from the motors that we used uh, to create the axle carrier. So uh, uh, we have those. I have two brass uh, pinion gears. Alrighty. Uh, I have some plastic crown gears. Um, really inexpensive plastic crown gears, but um, you know, they, they work quite well, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you how. Um, of course, uh, I have the axles cut. Uh, I've got uh, more than enough uh, wheels, I think, that are ready to, uh, they've all been, they've been cast, and they've been drilled and tapped, and there's a, uh, a grub screw inside them, so they're ready to go on the axles. And of course, speaker wire. Speaker wire, yes. That's right, you heard me correctly. Speaker wire. You'll, uh, well, you, you folks know why if, you, if you've seen uh, the other front motor chassis I've done before, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you everything. So we're gonna take everything step by step. Um, let me tell you exactly what we're going to do. Uh, I think what we're gonna do. First thing we're going to do is put the um, pinion gear on the, um, on the drive shaft, uh, then we're gonna connect the drive shaft to the motor shaft. Uh, then we're going to put the rear axle and, uh, on, on the back and make sure it meshes properly. Uh, listen, I, I'm gonna show you as much as I can. Feel free to skip search by all means. And if there's something that I've missed or uh, I, I, I wasn't clear about, by all means, put it in the comments and I'll, I'll address whatever your, your questions may be there. So let's get started, shall we? All right. All right, so as usual, 
glasses time. Um, now, uh, I've got a pair of vice grips here. And what I'm going to do is, uh, as you can see with the drive shaft here, the drive shaft fits through the drive shaft holder, like so. Oopsies. Fumble fingers today. Uh, like so. And that's what is going to drive the rear wheels. And you see? So we have to couple the uh, motor shaft to the drive shaft, and we need to put the pinion gear, brass pinion gear, on the shaft. Now, um, you can press fit the uh, gear onto the shaft. However, just to make sure it doesn't slip and, well, I, I, I've had experience where, you know, it, it, it has and you end up having to solder it anyway. Um, and let me just show you, there's a, a manner in which we can do this. And you see that? It goes through like so. Uh, we're going to press it through. that there we go now you see it it will kind of hold if, if you just want to press it but not really so I, I would really recommend that you solder it and uh, well let me show you how I would do that um, all right so we're going to uh, put the drive shaft in the vice grip like so Okay, and there is the, the gear, see that? <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to take some flux and a little bit of, and I mean a, a really a small, tiny bit of solder. It takes almost no solder uh, and, and less is more uh, with, with this particular uh, soldering joint. There you go. How about that? My vocabulary is coming back. Uh, I need a uh, pair of scissors. Here we go. And we really need a tiny piece of solder. And I mean tiny. Like tiny, minuscule, tiny. Oh, that's even maybe even too big, but let's see. Uh, no. I don't know if you can see that, but that's really tiny. Okay, so. Put that and we're going to need some tweezers and let's put some flux on the shaft let me just put some flux on the shaft either go like so there we go all right we're going to put the gear on So, all right, and see we've got the drive shaft protruding just a wee bit, not too much, but just enough. There we go. That should do it. We're going to put, uh, let me just cover this up, the solder right on the gear there, if we can see that. Very, very tiny piece of solder. And we have our trusty torch. And let's heat it up and see how we do. Done. Just like that. Just like that. And the solder went all the way through. And because we used a very, 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 etc., small piece of solder, uh, it went, as you can see, just on the shaft and not on the teeth. So there is our first drive shaft. Isn't that lovely? Still a bit warm, not too warm.
a wee bit. All right. There we go. And oh my goodness, look at that. Yeah, Lovely. Like that. Take the gear. And measure it up, make sure it fits okay. Oh, look at that. Lovely. Lovely. All right. Both are done. So um, let's put the, um, the coupler on. Um, <clears throat> And you know what we're going to use? This is where we use the speaker wire. Although we're just going to use the insulation of the speaker wire. So, as you can see, I've taken a cut of, there we go, and taken all of the wire out. And this is what we're going to use to put the drive shaft and the motor shaft together. Now the one thing that you, is really required here, believe it or not, is a pin. Yes, a pin. And you're going to wonder why the heck do you need a pin? Well, let me show you why. <laughs> All right, so let's do this one first. All right, and you see the shafts have to be very close to each other for everything to fit. Good. Now, how much of, oh, I need that much, I don't think. Our scissors, do a quick measurement here, just by eye, and that should do it. Right. <clears throat> now, taking the drive shaft out, we're going to push this onto the motor shaft. And actually, we'll go on. Actually, it goes on better, you know, easier and better than you think. Um, but it takes a little bit of patience. Um, as you can see, just pushing it on. Now, hang on. You see me pushing, and you see it's going on. It's going on already. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? You see that? And you just keep pushing. And again. Be patient. Now this is the easy part, <laughs> although the other part's pretty easy, but the reason that it's relatively easy is because you're pushing out this column of air as we're pushing. You see that? See it? You can also pull it a little bit like so, but be patient. It takes a wee bit of time just to push with your fingers, push and rotate. And you see how many, see how, see how far we've already got it up the, the motor shaft, yeah. And you want to get it at least over halfway if you can, because that way uh, you've got a nice, it's, it's got a lot of nice grip onto the motor shaft. It's uh, really neat. And boy, does it, uh, does it grip. Look at that. Isn't that great? I think it's great. Not quite halfway there, but. And I, I've used no lubricant, uh, no saliva, nothing like that. Just, just patience and um, some pinchy fingers. <laughs> there we go. And just work, work it towards the. Uh, there we go. That, that's actually a. That's great. Now. Now it's time to put the drive shaft through. Now. This is where it can get a little bit fun, but this is where the pin comes into play. Now, what you want to do is you want to make a wee hole on one side of the insulation. And the reason being is that if you don't, as you're pushing that drive shaft in the insulation, there's actually a little column of air there that gets compressed and it gets compressed and then it'll just move the drive shaft out. So you take a little pin, make a wee hole, and the air escapes, and you'll be able to put the drive shaft on without any issue. So let's make a, just a little, little hole. Doesn't have to be large, just a little one. 
so you can see that. Just a little one, like so. Make sure it puts it in. There we go. That's it. Just enough for the air to escape. And now we're going to push the drive shaft into the coupling. And you see, look, it's just great. There it goes. Ah, see, there we go. You see? You see the motor moving, and that, yeah, it's 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 already got enough grip, believe it or not. But you want to continue and push it as far as you possibly can, so that it's got a nice, a nice coupling. And because we made that wee hole, and, and I made it close to the the uh, motor shaft, and that way the air will escape, and we can just continue to join the drive shaft to the motor shaft. And uh, again, it's um, it takes a wee bit of patience, but that's okay. Here we go. And you can see, look at that. See, it's starting to couple. You see that? And it'll straighten out. The closer you get it, the more in line the uh, drive shaft and the motor shaft will be. So again, let's just uh, a little bit of patience and away we go. So there we go. Um, I didn't want to show you the entire process because it takes a little bit of fettling. I like that word fettling. Um, but as you can see, we've got it coupled and I just have the crown gear there as a test and you can see how it's going to just mesh very, very nicely. Um, so, um, we have the other chassis to do. I, I won't bore you with that, but um, let me get this done and then we'll move on to uh, setting up the rear axle. Okay, so we're gonna set up the rear end of both chassis. Um, and let me show you what I'm going to uh, use to do that. So we've already got our uh, drive shaft, pinion gear, crown gear, and it, I think it's going to mesh quite nicely. Um, boy, ah, this is going to be fun. So that's uh, on, on both chassis. Uh, sorry about that. And we're going to need some wheels. So I cast some of my, uh, these are... Um, task two resin wheels. They have been drilled and tapped and I have grub screws in them so they're ready to be put on an axle. Um, here is my uh, little Allen key to put the wheels on and uh, I guess that's really going to be the first step. So um, let's do that and then we'll see if we need any spacers uh, uh, to uh, make sure that everything is nice and square and tight. So let's choose some wheels here. Alrighty. All right. And get them on. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that. Uh, okay, I'm going to take this out just to make sure that it goes on properly. Here we go. Because it um, should fit quite well. Oh, there we go. And we just want, just want the axle, the just go to the front of the wheel. There we go. Which I'm going to need a little bit of help here. You can see that. There we go. Don't want it to protrude. We just want it to be, there we go. That is just lovely. That's a really good setup for the axle. A little deeper maybe, but there we go. Lovely. So let's take our Allen key and tighten up our wheel on the axle. And you just want it to be snug, right? You don't want to over torque it. Um, perfect. 
All right, that's one wheel. Let's put in our gear. And, well, so far so good. All right. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, and uh, wheel number one. Let's get uh, wheel number two here. Let's put this one in. And as you can see, we'll probably need some spacers, but that's fine. go. Gosh, yeah. Lovely. Good stuff. Oops, a little too far. <laughs> Here we go. That looks to be really, really where we want it. Okay, so let's tighten this up. snug there we go they're not moving and as you can see we'll need some spacers no problem um, now let's get our vernier caliper of course uh, to determine just how much of a spacer we will need and uh, even more importantly let's get one of our bodies here to see how uh, how this all lines up, and uh, oh look at that! Uh huh. Yeah. W see, we're going to need more of a spacer on one side than the other, and we uh, we kind of anticipated that, which is fine. Which is fine. All right. So let's do some measuring then. Ready? Let's see what kind of a spacer we would need. We'll need, oh, oh my goodness, four millimeters. All right, lovely. Yeah, four millimeters on this side. All right, thank you, body. Get you over there, thank you for your help. <laughs> so we'll need a four millimeter. Yes, perfect, okay. Let's undo this wheel. See? And we will undo it. Let's put on our spacers. One, two. My goodness, that is good. Well. Well, I'd rather be lucky than smart. <laughs> um, here we go. And there we go. Well, well, well. That. I actually have to uh, put the wheel in a little, a little more, I think. Hang on. Set. Yeah. Gentle. Okay. And that should be, that should do the trick. Well, look at that. Let's, uh, let's check it with the body again. Okay, here's the red alpha. Well, son of a gun, look at that. I think we have proper distances there. Look at that. Well, that's lovely. <clears throat> wow. Well, that worked out quite nicely. Okay. Now, here is the fun bit. And, and I'm just going to do one complete setup and then we'll go to the other chassis. But he, here, here's the fun bit. I, I know you're wondering, I used a, uh, well, a, a plastic crown gear. And that plastic crown gear, believe it or not, was sourced from SCX. Um, not very expensive, really. I, I, I bought it as a, uh, as a spare. 
But you know, how do you get the axle and this gear to be one? Well, believe it or not, a little trick I was taught by an old slot racer, um, use red Loctite. It really does work. Now the caution with using red Loctite is that uh, once it locks tight, it's, well, as its name implies, it's, uh, it's tightly locked. <laughs> so um, the trick is to get it into uh, just the space where the axle and the gear uh, exist. And the other trick is to make sure that the gear is as perpendicular to the spur gear, uh, the crown gear and the spur gear, as possible. And then you have to hold it and let it set. And it actually sets quite quickly. Now the uh, most elegant way of doing this is to get some uh, I use I use wax paper, just like a little bit of wax paper. You don't really need much. I'll show you here. That's all. In fact, I probably took too much. But you just need a wee bit of wax paper. In fact, probably half of that. Okay, and that's what we're going to use. Um, try and make sure it lies flat a little bit. There we go. We're going to need a toothpick, average ordinary. Toothpick that you'd have in an olive and some sort of alcoholic beverage of some sort, I'm sure. Uh, I grabbed a couple just to make sure. And undo top and just put, that is more than we will need, I assure you. All right, now, we're not gonna put it on this side because there's, well, we'll see how, uh, oh, you know what, we can. I think we can do this, okay. So we're gonna put a little bit on this side, favoring the plastic. You see, it just capillary action will will put it in, and you want it around the entire gear. And now you want on the other side. There we go. Yep. There we go. And a little more. There we go. Righto. Now, just try and hold it as perpendicular as possible with your fingers, and uh, it will set. It'll set actually much, uh, much quicker than you think. This stuff is really, really kind of cool. Um, do a little rotation. See, it's not, not set yet, but there we go. There we go. How's that looking? Mesh looks good. I mean, we're making these cars to go around our track. Uh, they're fun. Um, it, it, you know, I guess you could, you could race them, but uh, race them against each other, and I think you've got a fair, uh, a fair race. But uh, as far as this is, uh, this is just so much fun to do. And here, we, you, look, you, see, you see how it's actually moving the wheels. It's actually setting, believe it or not. Um, I'm, I'm amazed at this, this stuff. It, um, it really does work. So, let's let this set, and then I'll do the other uh, rear end setup, and I'll show you the end results. So, we used Loctite. Uh, or a Loctite type product to uh, secure the crown gear to the axle. Now, uh, it usually cures in about, you know, two hours or so. Um, I left it overnight. So, um, hopefully you can see here that it, uh, it's quite nice and it meshes really, really well. The other thing I want to point out is that if you just take a look at the way that I've set up the gear, it's actually slightly below the plane of the rear axle, it sets the motor down lower, and uh, it meshes very, very well. Uh, now to work in the gear uh, a little bit, and also to see if the darn thing works, 
you're going to laugh. I'm going to use <laughs> an old Eldon transformer. Now, this thing apparently is so powerful. Six volts max at 0.8 of an amp. So the output is really, uh, you know, about three and a half volts. Um, but let's, uh, let's set it up and I'll show you. So this is uh, vintage, to say the least. Um, how vintage? Well, the plug is actually two-prong. That's vintage. <laughs> so let's plug it in. And we are going to connect the motor to... Uh, There we go. Whoa. That's meshed quite well. Okay. That really works. How about that? All right. Let's try the other one here. See if it will also rotate. Quite as strong. Oh, of course, the connection helps. It's moving as well. So we have a good gear mesh. Uh, well, what we really have to do now is uh, build the rest of the chassis. Okay, so I have already. Uh, taken the liberty of soldering uh, lead wires to my uh, brushes, and you don't have to solder them, but uh, I, I tend to because I uh, just want to make sure that the contact is really, really good. So I've got two sets of brushes, uh, I have uh, two guide blades, and we're going to wire up the motors, so um, to, to the guide blades, that is. So I've got my... Um, uh, excuse me. Sorry, I've got my uh, soldering iron plugged in. I've just plugged it in. Um, there we go. So while the soldering iron is warming up, um, I'm going to set up my brushes in my guide blades. So um, you just take it and put it through like so. Right? Actually, let's do red on right. There we go. That should do it. Press it in like so. Red. And we'll need a brown on the other side. Through. Sometimes we have to, uh, well, nothing a good pair of vice grips won't help with. <laughs> Let's get that in the uh, guide. There we go. Like so. And there we are. So we have the guides. There's one guide ready to go. Over there. And here is the other guide ready to go. So. It's going in quite nicely. There we go. It's one. And the brown. Here we go. 
sliding in quite nicely. Very nice indeed. <clears throat> okay. Now let's see if our... Uh, oh. Looks like our uh, soldering iron is hot enough. Now, if I remember correctly, um, for our track, the bottom uh, pole of the motor should go to the right side, which in this case will be red, and the upper to the left side. So, let's, um, let's get some flux on here. Like so. And some flux on the red wire. Oh, it's a lot of flux. <laughs> there, there's quite a bit of solder on the pole of the of the motor. So what we're going to do is going to kind of weave this through like so. Um, oh, there we go. Like so. put in. All right. So let's solder the first wire and try and hold it like so. Okay. There we go. Soldering iron like so. And there is the red wire. And now let's do the brown wire. And there we have it. The wires are now soldered. Lovely. Well, I'll do the second one and we'll uh, see if the polarity is right on the track. <laughs> Actually, before I get too carried away, um, we have to set the chassis up now. We've got both done. Uh, let's get the setup lock and uh, set them up. So I have our uh, setup block here and we have both chassis ready to uh, ready to be set up. Um, let's get to it before. Uh, oh, I just want to put these on the track. Let's get uh, let's get right to it. OK. Lovely. There's an axle. And we'll need some front wheels. Okay. Now the um, brushes look a bit springy, so let's try and bend those down a wee bit. See if that helps. Now we have to bend them down even more. Looks a little better. Okay. And let's get a uh, front wheel here. And we will secure the wheel to the axle. There we go. So, okay, good stuff. There's another wheel here. Yeah, let's make sure it goes on first before we put it through. No problem there. So let's put that through and put our 
front wheel arm. Well, we may need some spacers, but uh, we'll do that when it's time to we'll do that when it's time to uh, get it on the body. For now, we just want the wheels to uh, rotate enough to get it around the track. Let's secure the uh, second wheel on. And as you can see, we'll need spacers on the front axle for sure, but um, we'll do the spacers when we fit the chassis to the body. Right now, we just want to make sure it can get around the track. All right. Well, may as well put the tires on. And make sure that they seat properly. There we go. And you can see how we can get them to seat into the wheels. That looks good. And the front tires also. Okay, making sure that they seat properly. Okay. Lovely. Well, let's see how it looks on the setup block. Ooh, that's better. A little high, but much better. Huh. First one done. Lovely. Grab a wheel. Okay. Tighten the grub screw. Remember not to over tighten, of course. That's, uh, just don't want to do that. Oops, let's see here. Ah, there we go. Make sure this goes on without an issue. Ooh, there we go. Lovely. Tighten the grub screw. And you want the grub screw to be just snug. You don't want to over torque it. And as you can see, it won't, uh, well, it's not coming off the axle, which is always good. Ah, four tires, please. There we go. It's seating the tires here. Go. One. Two. Let's see. Ah. Where is it? There it is. Sorry. I like this one for the back. Yeah, it's nice. Right. Rears and the fronts. Here we go. Seating them into the rims and uh, making sure that once they seat in they're really quite nice actually. There we go. Well, oh my, quite nice, quite nice indeed. Look at that. So we have two. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> so we have both chassis kind of ready. <laughs> Here we go. They don't uh, quite.
quite fit on the block. But as you can see, they're, um, I think they're ready to go around the track. So um, let's take them for a spin and see if these darn things actually work. All right, folks, here are the two chassis, front motor with drive shafts, and uh, we're gonna take them around the track. Now, full disclosure, I have not done this uh, before showing you folks. We're doing this together for the first time, so they hopefully will get around the track all the way. Um, <laughs> I adjusted the, uh, the braids as, as best I, I could or as I thought, so um, we're gonna do one in each lane and see how they go. Um, now, we're not timing. Uh, this is just to make sure that mechanically they work and that um, I'm close to where the braids should be as far as setup. So, very preliminary. So, uh, let's do this uh, chassis in the right lane. Fingers crossed. See if it goes. Here we go. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. One more. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. One more lap. Okay. Okay, there's one. Wow. Well, let's try the other in the left lane and see if it goes. Here we go. Oh my goodness. It's also going around. Okay, we two laps. Here we go. Second lap, second lap. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Well, you look at that. They actually, they actually go around the track. Oh, wonderful. Just wonderful. So, um, well, come on, we, gotta, we, we, we have to try this. We have to see if in fact the bodies, uh, let's just take a little preemptive look here. I, I've got to try this just to see. There's one, there's the white one. Of course, it needs some fettling. And here is the red one. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. Well, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. And the, you know, these projects always take longer than you think they're going to take which is part of the fun because that's part of the hobby. Um, anyway, thank you so much for being so patient <laughs> with me. Um, ah, well, there'll of course be another installment in this uh, project or projects. Uh, but thank you so much for, uh, for being with me and oh, joining me to get these things actually uh, very well, we're getting close, we're getting close. Uh, uh, I'm getting excited. So uh, let me just say thanks again for all of you for uh, watching, commenting, and subscribing. I really appreciate all of your support uh, here at Scale Car Garage. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe.